The cost of prescription drugs is outrageous and rapidly rising, and you may not think it's a big deal, but this leads to things like higher insurance costs, higher out-of-pocket costs, and arbitrary restrictions from insurance companies that often prevent people from getting the best care, or people may have to make tough decisions between drugs and basic necessities. But why is this happening? There are a lot of articles written on the topic, and most of them blame greedy big pharma and the insurance companies, but they're missing something important. Remember what the Buddha said, the mind is like water. When turbulent, it's difficult to see, but when still and unperturbed, everything becomes clear. And I'm going to show you that doctors are largely to blame for these drug prices, and we're going to talk about a very specific example, which is the multiple sclerosis drug, Abagio. Let's have some fun. Abagio or teraflunamide is a once-a-day pill for relapsing forms of multiple sclerosis and it was the second drug that was an oral FDA approved medication for MS. And I'll show you some of their advertisements. They focus on showing that Abagio is well tolerated which is generally true. It can cause some side effects such as hair loss and gastrointestinal upset and even liver injury but for most people is well tolerated on a day-to-day -day basis. So you can see quieting MS quietly. Don't let MS therapy define their day. And you can see how happy she looks. And this is very clever. Keep your patients on track with Abagio. And there's a maze that looks like a brain. And there is evidence that Abagio is effective in MS. For instance, this is the TEMPSO study where you can see it's a randomized study of teraflunamide or Abagio versus placebo. And they're looking at relapses or attacks in MS, such as vision loss and numbness and weakness. And you can see there were fewer attacks in people randomized to Abagio by about 31%. Also, Abagio reduced disability progression compared to placebo, at least the higher dose, 14 milligrams, by approximately 30%. And I do have a video going into Abagio in more detail, how it works, all the side effects, and some of the clinical trial results if you want to take a look. But this drug would be considered to be a lower efficacy drug, which is much less effective than several other modern multiple sclerosis drugs, though those other drugs do have their own side effects, which is why Abagio is marketed more for its tolerability than for its effectiveness. But wait a minute, is Abagio really even a new drug? Teraflunamide turns out to be the active metabolite of an old rheumatoid arthritis drug, Arava, or leflunamide, which in the body is converted into the two isoforms of teraflunamide. Leflunamide on its own has no significant biological effect. And there's a huge difference in cost of these drugs. Abagio is about $112,000 per year. You heard that correctly. Now, there are different drug prices. They vary widely. Insurance companies negotiate discounts. But can you imagine a 20-year-old person with multiple sclerosis could take this drug for 30 years for a total bill of greater than $3 million, far greater than the average lifetime income of an American. But by contrast, Arava, which is essentially the same thing in the body, has the same active ingredient, is only $372 per year. That's it pennies on the dollar. In fact, the typical dose of Arava is 20 milligrams, and teraflunamide exposure after a single 20 milligram dose of leflunamide, or Arava, is about 70%. In other words, 70% of leflunamide is converted to teraflunamide milligram for milligram, which is equal, essentially exactly, to a 14 milligram dose of teraflunamide, or Arava. In fact, presumably they chose the 14 milligram dose because of the long safety history with 20 milligrams of Arava. In fact, the EMA, the European equivalent of the FDA, was reluctant to even approve this drug as a new active substance because their policy states the different salts, esters, ethers, isomers, mixtures of isomers, complexes, or derivatives of an active substance shall be considered to be the same active substance unless they differ significantly in properties with regard to safety and or efficacy. In other words, it can't just be structurally different. It actually has to be different in safety and efficacy in the actual human with the actual disease. But how can one brand of distilled water be better than another brand of distilled water since they're molecularly identical, at least the active ingredient? And the prices of multiple sclerosis drugs in general are skyrocketing. You can see when beta seron entered the market, in 1993, it was considered exorbitantly expensive, and yet the prices go up and up even 
as more and more competitors enter the market. And there are now more than 20 FDA-approved drugs for multiple sclerosis. And you can see the addition of teraflunamide or Abagio in 2012. And all of these prices are tightly correlated with each other, a phenomenon known as shadow pricing, which is not collusion and is technically legal. So why don't doctors just prescribe Arava instead of Abagio? Why are they so dumb? But not so fast. Even though the active metabolite of leflunamide is teraflunamide, maybe leflunamide or Arava itself poses a problem. For example, it agonizes the aryl hydrocarbon receptor, originally thought to be beneficial in autoimmune diseases such as rheumatoid arthritis, but maybe it causes untoward side effects. Also, even though most of leflunamide is metabolized into teraflunamide, there are four minor metabolites of unclear significance. Also, leflunamide, or Arava, is a more potent inhibitor of mitochondrial respiration than teraflunamide. This is based on a study of isolated liver mitochondria in rats. And Abagio was marketed as being a cleaner version of Arava, with less risk of liver side effects. But wait a minute, that study on mitochondrial respiration, that was presented at Actrums, a multiple sclerosis conference, and look at who the scientists work for. Sanofi. That's the manufacturer of Abagio. Should we really listen to them? And this was published in 2013 after Abagio was already FDA approved. What exactly were they trying to achieve here? And why are we talking about rats and cell culture anyway? We can just look at actual humans with actual diseases and see what happens to their liver. This is from the product label. You're looking at rheumatoid arthritis studies with Arava to the left and Abagio in multiple sclerosis to the right, and you can see the side effects are remarkably similar. In fact, elevated liver enzymes occurred in 5% with the Rava, but in 15% with the higher dose of Abagio. Now, the doses here aren't all equivalent, but this review article found that with Abagio, teraflunamide, the MS drug, elevations above three times the upper limit of normal occurred in 6% with Abagio, but only 3.8% with Arava. So this idea that Arava is more toxic to the liver is complete nonsense, empirically false. And this phenomenon doesn't just stop with Abagio and Arava. There are many other examples of a similar but less expensive equivalent drug to treat the same condition. And this is just a chart of some examples within multiple sclerosis, and they all have their own technical considerations beyond the scope of this video. But just as one example, Casimpta is a subcutaneous under the skin formulation of ofatumumab, but there's an older drug, intravenous ofatumumab, known as Arzera, which is less than one-tenth the cost. So one potential way for doctors to reduce the cost of prescription drugs is simply by looking for opportunities to prescribe equally safe and effective medications that are equivalent but much lower in cost. But that doesn't happen very often in real life. For instance, Arava isn't prescribed very often, as far as I know, for multiple sclerosis. And I'm not exactly sure why. One of the reasons may be, of course, the lack of marketing, no drug rep is coming to us telling us to prescribe Arava for multiple sclerosis, there's simply no money on it, and patients aren't asking for it either. In fact, people with MS aren't necessarily that interested in this. I posted a Twitter poll asking if MS doctors should prescribe Arava, and I asked the question in a very biased way, trying to get as many yeses as possible, but only 50% said yes. But I'd love to know your thoughts. Do you agree with my analysis that Arava and Abagio are equivalent and that it's simply a waste of money to prescribe Abagio for multiple sclerosis? And what do you think about this as a broader phenomenon? Of course, I'm giving examples within my area of expertise, multiple sclerosis, but a rheumatologist could give many examples within the field of rheumatology and an oncologist could give many examples of cancer drugs where the same phenomenon is occurring. Of course, I'll do my part by not prescribing a Baggio, but how do we solve this problem from a larger perspective? It really does add up to a significant economic cost, and that's just money down the drain. It doesn't make anyone safer or healthier. I have my own insights and ideas, and I have to admit I'm holding back a little bit here, but if there is sufficient interest, there will be a part two to this video.